Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Back in March of this year. If y'all don't know, Russia made an announcement, Vladimir Putin. He came out and he basically said that he is going to wipe the debt, $20 billion debt to multiple countries in Africa. He's wiping their debt. A lot of them are under, you know, debt to the United States, China, Russia, the European Union, all that stuff. So Vladimir Putin came out, he said he was going to wipe the debt. And so when I heard about this back then, I'm like, yeah, this dude is playing the long game. And I, I've said this from day one, okay? He's playing the long game. China, his best friend, you know, that's my best friend. She a real bet. She got her own money. She don't, that's his best friend, right? They're playing the long game. China has basically taken over Africa, right? We've been talking about this for years. So now Putin has come in and he's decided to wipe the debt of several African countries. And so a lot of African countries were super happy super excited. Putin is the man. And now we fast forward to August. When did this take place? August 7th. Niger basically had a coup and they ousted the, de the democratic chosen president of Niger. He was put in by the French in the United States. And so they have basically ousted him. And right now there is so much unrest that is going on um, in Africa that we may be potentially getting into a war. And I don't think anybody is even focusing on this or realizing this, okay? Um, the coup is a very big thing. And right now, ECOWAS, which stands for the Economic Communities of West African States, there are 15 countries that are in ECOWAS, um, Nigeria being one of them, uh, Liberia, um, Ghana, Cote d'Ivory, aka Ivory Coast, um, Burkina Faso. So there's several countries that are part of Iwa, ECOWAS. And so they were kind of put together, you know, with the help of the West. And so now they're trying to have sanctions towards Niger and say that, you know, at this point, if Niger is not um, following, they're gonna be sanctioning them. So they're not gonna allow any food and things into the country. And I'm trying to find this damn post. I wonder if I screenshotted it. I gotta find this post because America is also trying to jump in the sanction as well. Okay, it's coming up, I know what's that. Give me just a second. It is getting real out here. We have so much dialogue. Okay, here it is. Star Child posted it. Okay, we found it. So, let me share my screen. We found it. All right. So this is the dis this is back into my Discord. So they're saying Niger, uh, Niger has suspended the export of gold and uranium to France. France has suspended aid to Niger after the coup. One out of every three light bulbs in France is powered by uranium from Niger. Uranium generates electricity, yet only 18% of Niger's citizens have access to electricity. Okay? So now, old man Jodan got himself involved, child. The United States of America threatens to withhold aid to Niger due to the military takeover. The Niger military said they should keep their aid and give it to their millions of homeless people in the United States of America. Charity begins at home. Child, I had to clutch my invisible pearls. I wasn't ready for that shit. I was not ready for Niger to shade the fuck out of America. They said, I'm 
collection stimulus money. We don't care if you keep y'all's aid. Give that aid to your homeless. You know all the homeless people in LA? You know all the homeless people in New York? Charity starts at home. We don't need no money from you. Russia got this. So for y'all who are wondering why they're running around in certain countries of Africa, you know what I'm saying, holding up the Russian flag, because Russia cut that check. Russia wiped that debt. Okay? So this is how this is going to affect us here in the States. Uranium is a big damn deal. I know they love to spin it that Africa is just poor. There's nothing there. If there's nothing in Africa, why are all these European countries, why is the West always there? You have to ask yourself that. Uranium powers lights and everything else. The, the main issue is that they're trying to start a pipeline. And they're starting that pipeline from Nigeria. It's going through Nigeria and a bunch of other countries. And they want to start siphoning uranium and oil to Europe. Because that war in Ukraine, it's, it's affecting everything globally. Okay? Vladimir is playing the long game. So they want to siphon all of these resources, yes, and gold. They want to siphon all these resources from Africa, build this pipeline, okay? And take all this to Europe, but not pay them. So now the Africans are saying, no, we're not doing this anymore. You're not siphoning our uranium. You're not taking our oil. You're not taking our gold. How dare you take from us to go benefit France, to go benefit Europe? You're not even cutting us a check. Remember, when we put sanctions on Russia and we say we don't want anything from Russia, we're not going to allow any imports from Russia, one of the things that we are allowing from Russia is uranium. Why wasn't that stopped? Because we need uranium to power everything. Who put a teacup in if y'all remember me telling y'all this two, three years ago? I told y'all that the battlefield would not be on solid ground. The battlefield is going to be via technology. And right now, with the power that Russia is having, especially with these nations, the West is scared. This is really serious, you guys. He literally has the power right now. If we're not able to get re uranium, it's bye-bye for the lights, for the electricity, the grid. Remember the grid? This is real. So yeah, I don't have the energy to cry tattoo tears about Tory getting 10 years because this actually affects me, you, your family. Right now, it broke this morning that France has sent over military people. I'm trying to find the post that I posted to y'all earlier. Because I told everybody to do their homework. Put a teacup if you're in the Discord and you watched all the videos that I posted earlier today. I'm trying to find my post. We have a lot of posts on here. So like everything gets pushed down. You got to scroll back up to see. Oh yeah, Night Coder posted this. Shout out to Night Coder. That's my French tea sipper. Bonjour, <laughs> mon ami. Uh, let me go ahead and share this. He posted this um, as a reminder. So these are just like some of the things, like this is a map. So you can see here the crude oil, the coffee, the grains, the gold, Colton, um, just everything. There's so like Africa is so rich in minerals. You know, the, the Colton is what also, Coltan is what also is used in cell phones, like to make your iPhone, your Android. So all of these minerals are there. This is what they're really fighting for. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm trying to find my post. What I posted this morning. So yeah, we have a lot of like we have a celebrity chat room. You know, we you know when you want to 
have escapism, we go there. But we also talk about real shit in here. But I'm trying to find my post that I did earlier. More posts. Because there was a video in there and I don't have the link on me. Here it is. Okay, so I said, good morning, everyone. Never forget what happened to Libya. Everyone's hands are dirty. The resources globally are dwindling. There is a spiritual battle going on and the great divide is happening. The poor are no longer sitting back, allowing the rich to exploit them. I'm going to be going live later on to address a lot of stuff. Um, in the meantime, get caught up. Niger is preparing for foreign invasion. Several voluntary battalions were formed in the capital and the armed forces are on high alert. France just invaded their airspace. This is homework. See y'all in a few hours. So remember, Jackson had posted this on Twitter and he says they want to destroy Niger like they destroyed Libya with Gaddafi. This was Libya when Gaddafi was in power. This is Libya today with American democracy. So a lot of people are waking up. And then I also posted, you know, the video for y'all to watch about um, the Nigerian president, uh, Tinubu. So Tinubu is just a horrible, just whatever child, just a trash president. Um, he's backed by a lot of foreign powers. Um, he got the nerve to be talking about some damn, uh, you know, we might be willing to go to war with Niger. Meanwhile, the Nigerians are like, we don't even have electricity half the damn time. All our shit is being powered by generators. If that, we, we don't want to go to war for all this. It's sad because it's always the people that end up suffering that are being used like pawns. The people don't want to fight. This ain't they fight. Let Niger handle that. Ecowoc don't want to really fight. They don't really do too much of anything anyways, but what the West tells them. Right now in South Africa, um, we had a real good conversation yesterday about the stuff that was going on in South Africa. Cause I know a few months ago they were dealing with a lot of rolling blackouts. And so one of the discorders that was in South Africa, she was kind of breaking it down and she was like, no, 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 this is not a temporary thing. This has been going on for a while and now it's just basically exacerbated itself. So right now what's going on in South Africa, this is why I say all this stuff is spiritual, all of this. Everything that's happening on the continent, everything that's happening here in America, all of this is spiritual. Right now, currently in South Africa, there, there's so much fighting. People in South Africa are pissed. Okay? Unfortunately, you have a segment that's calling for the death, I think I can say that on this stream, of white people. This is how crazy it's getting when i tell you it's something spiritual that is going on in africa in south africa they are dealing with these blackouts what happened from what um the south african young lady was telling me is that the people in power the government they were basically once again siphoning from the people they were selling electricity to all of these neighboring countries and to overseas but as they're getting the money, right? So they're selling the electricity to their neighbor and to Europe. But as they're getting the money, they're not fixing the infrastructure. They're literally pocketing the money. So now South Africa is in turmoil. And it's very, very hard for them. Um, yeah, somebody said Niger is not Nigeria. These are two different countries for people who are confused. Yeah, Niger, Niger and Nigeria are two totally different countries, y'all. Um, Somebody said, teach them tea. And if I'm talking too deep, please let me know. My stream is still working for now. They're playing with my melanin, though. I see the stream is getting lighter, but whatever. That's StreamYard for you. Um, so South Africa is going through it. And right now, it's getting bad. So when I tell you this whole racial thing, it's not just happening here in America. It's not just what happened down in Alabama. There is a, there is a global spirit where a lot of people who are being oppressed, they are getting up and they're fighting back. And it's getting real out here, all over, from Hollywood to regular people boycotting at jobs, at picket lines, fast food workers. They are tired. 
Mr. Igor, who owns, who's the CEO of Disney, and you know, he he owns all of this. He makes $78,000 a day. But you have SAG AFRA people who don't get a living wage. How do you make $78,000 a day? You won't be able to spend that in a lifetime. The greed is real and people are tired. So we're going to watch what's going on currently in South Africa. Let me go ahead and share my screen real quick here. Because there's a race war that may end up breaking out again in South Africa. Some other parts of the world, like South Africa, where political leaders chant about genocide, about killing white farmers in stadiums full of supporters. Shoot to kill the mother. Kill the poor, the farmer. Kill the poor, the farmer. Brr, pa. That was the leader of the Economic, Economic Freedom Fighters Party, Julius Malema. And if you think he is even a little bit sorry about it, then think again. I will sing this song as and when I feel like. It's not my song, it's a struggle song. Now, this chant of killing the Boers, killing the white farmers is being presented as just a civil rights anti-apartheid chant as if that shocking history of farmers being targeted in brutal attacks where they are robbed, tortured, and in some cases murdered, as if that's never happened. These attacks are real, and yet this murderous chant is not only tolerated but celebrated by some race-baiting miscreants. <laughs> in the space of a week in June this year, there were seven farm murders and these cases are horrific, including Pierre and Belinda de Kock, who were murdered on their farm in Picketburg in the Western Cape. Their bodies found with stab wounds to the neck. That was within days of one of the most sickening attacks uh, where Anik and Henny Klassen, both in their 70s, were tortured before being set on fire while still alive. Seven farm murders in the space of a week. These people okay. are real. I'm not gonna, oh, I just hate hearing about stuff like that. It's sad, it's sad. Um, so we're going to listen to this real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There was another. Is this the one? No. This is the other one I wanted to show y'all. So this is, you know, cause like I said, this is real right now. And this was from five years ago. They were saying that they were tired five years ago. And now we're here in 2023. Listen to what this man says. Condemned it. But this crime does not only happen to white farmers, it also happened to black farm workers. The case lit a fuse and drew large protests at court. White farmers own vast tracts of land in South Africa and receive little sympathy. The white people's culture of life in this country is at its highest. They live a, world, a first world lifestyle in a third world country. And the majority of the population lives a third world lifestyle in a federal country so and that yeah, did y'all hear that i know he has a strong sexy south african accent he said the majority of the whites in south africa live a first world lifestyle in a third world country but the south africans live a third world lifestyle in a third world country that was five years ago let that sink in so i believe that this is why a lot of the conservative YouTubers, a lot of like the white media, the ones who, you know, as soon as black folks do something there, you know, hey, y'all, I'm live at the, you know, we got, we got to talk about this. This is why they're not having this conversation. There is some, you can feel the energy in the air. There is some type of uprising coming and it has been boiling and boiling and boiling. Now we have leaders singing songs saying kill white farmers. When before, five years ago, was the people saying that. Now you have the leaders. You have this uprising in Niger that's going on. You have the Alabama boat situation that went on, black versus white. And I don't even want to so much dwell on race because I think race plays a factor in things, but I don't even want to so much dwell on race it's really the under, it's really the disenfranchised. 
It's the poor against the rich. It's the regular man and woman against the elite. The people who are running everything, people are tired. The resources are damn near gone. Who who holds the resources will make it into the next century. And right now, I don't know where we stand in all that as Americans, you know? So while, like I said, you know, it's good to spill tea and talk about celebrity news, you get way more on this channel that you're not going to get elsewhere. We're going to talk about real shit that's really affecting people. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.